Up next on the Tesla Plaid channel. I'm thinking this might be ours. It's going pretty easily. All right. That did it. Wheel covers. You have a pretty good looking wheel under here. Oh yeah, this feels really strong. <laughs> Welcome back to the Tesla Plaid channel. In today's episode, we're going to cover a couple of different things. We're going to start with the delivery of this car, which is our second Plaid, this one with the 19-inch wheels. Then we're going to show some little tweaks and customizations we did to the car before we took it out for our first night of drag racing. And then we're going to show you the first pass that this car made out at Showtime Drag Strip. Enjoy! We're headed out to pick up our second Plaid. It came in on Wednesday. It's Friday morning right now, and it's here at the Tesla Tampa Delivery Center. As you can see, we're driving our 2019 Raven, not our new uh, Plaid with the 21-inch wheels. And that's because after I pick up this car, somebody's got to drive the other car home, and that somebody is my wife. And frankly, she doesn't want to drive that, that yoke steering column. And I don't blame her, it's a hassle to drive. So, but three cars, all of them fast, one that runs 10 seconds, and two that run nine seconds. That'll be our vehicle stable for the meantime. If you're wondering what happened to our 2016, my sister's driving that now. So it's still in the family, but we didn't have a garage space for it. Let's see how these 19 inch wheels look, but I haven't seen them anywhere in real life. And I don't think they've delivered very many of them. This could be one of the very first deliveries with the 19 inch wheels. So let's check it out. All right, we're at Tesla to pick up the car. I haven't seen it yet. Let's check it out. We brought our own custom license plate. Some of you that live in other states outside of Florida might be wondering, how do you have a license plate already? Well, here in the state of Florida, license plates stay with the driver, not with the car. So when I gave my car, my 2016, to my sister, this was the license plate that was on it. And she had to go out and get a new license plate, and I had to keep the plate and then I can reuse the plate on another car as long as it's within uh, like 30 or 45 days. So, worked out well. I'm thinking this might be ours. All right, we've got the 19 inch tires and wheels on this and uh, these are Pirelli P0s. I was kind of hoping they'd be Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, but apparently not. Yeah, I could have researched that online beforehand, but it wouldn't have changed anything. It's not like they uh, give you an option. So. I mean, comparatively, that looks like a lot of tire sidewall. And these look like covers, just like the Model 3 that we had. These Pirelli P0s are 285, 40 series on a 19 inch wheel on the back. 285, similar to the uh, Nittos that I've been testing. And then a 255, 45 series in the front. Otherwise, the car looks identical to the one we took delivery on just about four weeks ago. All right, this one with the 19 inch wheels, they all include basic autopilot. Interesting that they list the yoke steering wheel, you know, as a configuration item, as if it's an option, although currently it's no option. To me, that suggests that at some point in the future, they might offer a round wheel once they fulfilled their backlog. And then they've got some people that are like, I'm only going to order that with a round wheel. Well, then they'll offer the round wheel, won't they? All right. One of the fun things to do when you get this is remove the plastic film. All right, as before, we'll name our vehicle. I don't think we want to name it exactly identical to the other car because they need to have unique names in the Tesla app on my phone so that when the app says something like your car finished charging or the alarm went off in your car, whatever, you know which car it was. So we named the other Plaid Tesla Plaid channel. We'll call this Tesla Plaid channel two. Just nine miles on this one. I think the other one had a couple more than that. You get one year of free premium connectivity. Just one more car, I promise. The, uh, the Plaid Model X, that is. That'll be the last one. Really, I made it this time. But first things first, we've got some modifications to do here on the one with 19 inch wheels. Starting right here today, we barely had this car for 24 hours. This plaid badge is coming off. The front license plate bracket's coming off. I got to install a dash cam, number of things. So I'm gonna get started on those projects right now. All right, I've heard that a good trick is to use dental floss to remove this badge. And uh, let's see how all that works. 
Alright, so far so good. I'll have to get the sticky stuff off. Oh, never mind. Let's keep going here. Alright. It's going pretty easily. Alright, that does it for the letters, and that sticky stuff seems to come off real easy. We'll use some mild solvent to get the last remnants off there. And just like that, we're debadged. I did hit the residue with a little bit of a uh, bug and tar remover. Powerful stain fighting formula easily removes dried on residue. It's not a paid promotion, just something I happen to have sitting around my garage. So, as I look at the car now without a badge and with the same license plate that my 2016 Tesla S75, which was also blue, virtually an identical shade of blue, I can't help but think that as many people see this car, neighbors and such, will probably think it's maybe just the same car and that I dechromed it, maybe switched out the wheels, and won't immediately recognize that it's an entirely different car. So, same color, same plate. Just one thing worth mentioning when it comes to debadging a vehicle, I'd recommend to always do it as early in the vehicle's life as possible because if you wait a few months or worst case a year or two and then decide to debadge it, you're going to find that the badge that was on there caused the paint to be protected underneath. So you'll remove the badge and then you'll find that the paint weathered differently and then the part that was covered by the badge will be pristine where that paint was perfectly protected. So you remove the badge, now you can still see the outline of the badge and the paint. So by removing the badge as close to day one as possible, you avoid that kind of unintended ghost of where the badge was. All right, we're done with the badge. Let's get that front license plate frame off. Front license plate frames on Teslas are a little bit deceiving. People take a look and they see these bolts and they think that it's screwed into the bumper, which it isn't. You've got these three bolts, which are very unusual pattern uh, on the bolt head. It's like a five-leaf clover of some sort. So most people aren't going to have a tool that fits that. I certainly don't. But I find that a good pair of pliers or vice grips will get these right out. So I'm going to remove those, and then you'll see that what's underneath doesn't screw into the bumper at all. So it's possible to remove this and have a clean end result, exactly like my other Teslas. If you take a look at the front of my 2019 Tesla Raven, there's no bolt holes, no evidence that there was ever a license plate frame on the front of this car. So this will be the end result that we'll have on the plaid once we're done removing the plate frame. Just got to get a firm grasp on these with a common pair of pliers. And once you get them started, pretty easy to get them out. All right, these screws are coming right out. There's two, there's three, and the outside painted bracket is now off, leaving us with this bracket underneath that is just affixed with a super strong double-sided adhesive pad of some sort. It is super heavy duty, not easy to get off. Now in my very first test of my 2016, I just applied a lot of force and just pulled the sucker right off. This car costs a little bit more than that, so I'm going to take a little more effort, be extra cautious. I don't want to cause even the least bit of a scratch or anything. So I'll try the dental floss again to kind of get it started, see how it goes from there. All right, so I don't think there's a dental floss in the world that's going to get this level of adhesive off. So my new approach, it's kind of based on the same concept, but I've got a number of old shoelaces over there. And I find that if I use a shoelace in a similar manner to dental floss, it pulls the adhesive out one little bit at a time. So yeah, this is going to be time consuming, but I've got time and I'd rather do it right than, uh, you know, use brute force and do any damage to the paint or the bumper. So I'm clearly making progress. I can see big pieces of adhesive coming out and I'll just kind of keep working that. You can see I'm probably already 10% of the way through it. So we'll keep working this and looks like a safe approach. You can see that adhesive coming through and I've got a whole bunch of shoelaces to work with. I would not recommend to do this bare hands. Now it's coming right off. Total lapse time here is probably maybe two and a half minutes. I could very easily just pull this piece off if I wanted to right now, but I'm going to choose not to do that. I don't want to underestimate how strong this adhesive is and risk doing any damage to the paint. Okay, the top strip of adhesive is completely undone. There's just a little bit remaining on the bottom strip. All right. The 
it did it. So you can see there's like two strips of adhesive. This is quite a solid piece of plastic right here. I don't know if you can get a sense for its girth, but it is a pretty solid block. Obviously we have a little work to do to remove the rest of the adhesive residue. I'll start by just doing that by hand. Then I'll break out a microfiber cloth and maybe the, uh, the bug remover. You can see a lot of these big pieces just come right off. Just like any kind of a tape residue, you can start to build a ball and use that ball to remove the rest of it. The reason I felt good about this approach is because all the force that I was putting on it was outward and away from the painted surface of the bumper. You get a sense for how this is coming off there. This whole kind of bottom corner is already done. Another option that I'm fully aware of is applying heat to it. That's actually what I had used the very first time when I removed an almost identical mounting bracket from my 2016 Model S75. I hit it with a uh, blow dryer. I didn't have any kind of like, you know, industrial heat gun kind of a thing. So I just used a hair dryer to heat it up to begin with and soften the adhesive. And then I grabbed that block and pulled to take it off and just uh, one pull and there was a whole lot less ad adhesive because the adhesive was all you know still together in one piece and most of it was still attached to that block but I didn't feel so good about putting heat on this paint this time and uh, I didn't mind spending the time taking this approach. And I think the reason this approach works is because this adhesive sticks to itself a lot more strongly than it sticks to the paint on the bumper so all right I think we're ready for the microfiber cloth with some of the bug remover. All right, final step. We'll use a little of the bug and tar remover on this area just to clean it up. All right, we got a microfiber towel here that we're wiping it off with. Just a tiny bit of residue here in one spot that I can see. All right, that's an end result that I'm quite happy with. It's like a mirror finish, clean. I don't see a scratch or a ding or a bit of residue there anywhere. All right, we have our before and after. Using the magic of uh, computer technology, I can switch back and forth between the images of the Tesla Plaid before it had the license plate bracket removed and after. Okay, so let me use this computer technology. So there it is before, and there it is after. Again, that's after. Now I'm gonna switch back to what it was before. And there it is before. So yeah, things you can do with computers these days. I know which one I like better. So one last thing, and that's the wheel covers. I fully understand these are aerodynamic and if I wanted to drive the car to the maximum range, whatever it is, 400 miles or something, then leaving these on would be the way to go. But if you pull these off, you have a pretty good looking wheel under here. Granted, it's missing its center cap and I'm sure there's a way to get those somewhere online. I'd have to think this has got to be better for cooling the brakes because when I'm going 150 miles an hour, do I really want that brake rotor to be hidden behind this aerodynamic cover? Or would it be better for it to just get a whole lot more air, as you can see right here? So I'm going to go ahead and take all four of these wheel covers off, and I'm going to spend some time looking for some center caps. I think the center caps that I have for my other wheels are going to fit on these. Let me give that a shot. Those of you that have been following the channel, maybe you watch my video about the power walls and my solar panels. You've seen these tires stack in the corner, and they've got a center cap here. Now, I was able to pull the center cap out and use it in the 20-inch wheels that I have on my older plaid. I might say older. It's, what, all of one month old today. And those went nicely right there in the center cap. Got plenty of tires and wheels here to choose from. I count 20 wheels and tires surrounding us right now, right? We got four on three cars, that's 12. Those four and these four, that's another eight or 20 tires and wheels. So let me play with the center caps and see how they look on this car. All right, I haven't tried it yet myself. We're working in real time here. Let's see if these caps pop in. I'm guessing they probably will. There you go. So that cleans up quite a bit. All right, we got all the covers off the 19 inch wheels. Now these are pretty good looking wheels now. They were incredibly dirty for a car that's barely 24 hours old, but the other center caps fit just fine. Silver, of course, those came off my, I think originally my 2016 Model S slipstream wheels. They fit nicely and I kind of like the way it looks. Matching nice looking wheels with caps. It's a good day of work. We got the plate frame off. We got the badge off. We installed the Blackview dash camera. That was pretty easy. Productive day all in all. And it looks like Showtime Drag Strip is open for Street Wars tonight. Wondering if maybe I should have shot a video of installing this Blackview 
dash camera in the car. I was just in a hurry to get it done for tonight and didn't bother with shooting any video, but 4K, and there is a link there in the description of all my videos for a discount if you're interested in getting one of these 4K cameras. I love them. They actually saved me three separate times in three separate cars in my Raven, in my 2016 Model S, and also in the 2018 Model 3 that we had for a while. All three of those cars were hit different ways and all of them were caught on that Blackview dash camera. So don't take my word for it. Check out the video that's in the link of the description. It shows all three accidents and the high definition camera footage all three times. Check it out. All right, let's get out and race tonight. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how these tires perform out at Showtime drag strip tonight. Could be faster, could be slower. We don't know. I'm excited to find out. I should also mention that I was hoping to bring out both of the plaids to Showtime tonight, but I didn't have anyone to drive the other one out. Until I can find someone to drive the other one out for me, it's tough to get both cars to the drag strip on the same night. It's not like I have a tow hitch back there where I can tow one of them with the other one. Although that would be a pretty funny sight to see, but Model S's don't typically get trailer hitches. They're not uh, tow rated like the Model X, but we do have a Model X on order for delivery early next year. So I guess the Model X can tow one of these, and that's the way to get one of each to the drag strip next year. But until then, we'll figure it out. But it's all about the 19s tonight. That's what we want to test. And looking forward to seeing what these tires will do. See if this car is any faster, any slower than the other one. A lot of Showtime drag strip for Street Wars, and we got some fast cars out here already. And trucks, so that drag truck on Big Slick. I see the Mons out here again. Is that a Ford LTD? All kinds of cars. We charged up nearby right to the top, so we're at 99% even as we came in here. I just turned it on for uh, drag strip mode. It says it only needs two minutes to be ready. So it must still be warm from uh, me driving it over here. The track doesn't officially open for another six minutes and there's a few cars in front of us. So it could be eight or 10 minutes before we're on the track. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this car performs since this is the one that will be our dedicated race car going forward. All right, we're the third car down the track and it's uh, freshly prepped. The track just opened. We're in drag strip mode ready, peak performance. And we're gonna completely ignore the car in the lane next to us because we are gonna stage up fully in uh, launch mode here. We don't have any cameras on the car. We're at 98%. We've got everything in place. This should be a fast pass, low sixes. So. I don't know if this guy's ever been down the track before next to me. I'm going to completely ignore him, other than the fact that he has to be staged in order for the uh, light to turn green. All right, let's go drag strip mode, launch mode. Here we go. I'm going to wait till it says completely ready here. Here we go. Oh, yeah, this feels really strong. Oh, my gosh, he's going to pass this guy. <laughs> here we go. Oh, yeah, this feels really Oh, oh my gosh, I think we're going to pass this guy. <laughs> Holy mackerel. All right, that is our first ever pass in our 19-inch plaid. I like the way it felt. I didn't hear the tires making any noise. Unfortunately, it's a long line in the staging lanes right now, so could be 15, 20 minutes before we're able to get another pass. I don't know if I'm gonna sit in drag strip mode that whole time, so I'm gonna take it out because I think it'll only take a minute or two to get it back. Okay, so for that pass, I had no GoPros on the car, just this inside GoPro and the inside dash cam, so no wind resistance lost. 604, 121.36. Six. I had the uh, mile an hour and I had the ET. Yeah. Wanna know a secret? what this isn't the same car no no it's not oh it's almost identical but it's got different wheels it's got 19 inch wheels i just picked it up yesterday oh. yeah yeah i thought this would be faster because it's got less weight on the wheels more sidewall too Real good. you're only about uh three tenths three yeah and a half tenths away from the mile per hour and that's the first ever pass i made the car i mean this is it. that was it so on that pass we ran a 604 
which is the best we've ever run in the other car, and that was on the Nittos. So that is very encouraging. We had both the ET and the mile an hour, 604 at 121.3. First ever pass. So I'm really digging that. Let's make another pass. What'd you run? 604. Nice. I tell you, I really like the way this car looks. I like these wheels. The lines are so much cleaner without the front license plate bracket on there. I like that the badge is off. Yeah, this is the uh, race car. This is the dedicated race one. So the question I've been getting most is, why two plaids? Well, I never intentionally planned to get two almost identical cars. That wasn't the plan. I'd ordered a Plaid Plus, like many people did. I ordered it back in September, almost a year ago, within the first couple minutes when those went on sale. And then in January, also right when they went on sale, I ordered a Plaid. So Tesla cancels the Plaid Plus and then I'm left with two orders, and they automatically converted the Plaid Plus order over to be just another Plaid. Well, like everybody else, we didn't know when our cars were going to come. I had no idea which was going to arrive first. The one that did arrive first here with the 21-inch wheels was the order that was uh, from September for the Plaid Plus. And then I'm faced with the decision, well, should I go ahead and cancel the other order then, now that I've got my first Plaid? Well, in the meantime, as many of you know, Tesla raised the price of the Plaid by $10,000. But they honored the price for anybody who'd placed an order previously. So now I've still got my reservation for the second Plaid, but $10,000 off the going price. I could cancel that order, or I could buy the car knowing that I'll be able to easily resell it because I've got a $10,000 cushion between the current price. I decided to go ahead and keep the order, take possession of it, especially because it was the one that I really wanted, the 19-inch wheels, which is what I ordered on both cars to begin with. If I'd uh, kept both of them as 19-inch wheels, then this 21-inch wheel one would not have been here. It was almost exactly one month between the delivery of these two cars. So by converting one of the 19-inch wheel orders over to a 21-inch wheel order, it allowed me to get a car an entire month early, and I've been enjoying it and putting it on the channel as you guys have seen. So now that I've got the car that I want, do I really need two plaids? Well, my wife's not interested in driving either one of them. Um, she's got a 10 second daily driver here. <laughs> a car that's got over a thousand time slips and has beat 90% of the cars, roughly. Probably somewhere between 85 and 90% of the cars that it's raced out of the various drag strips here in the Tampa area. 